A wonderful good morning here from our virtual Mission Innovation Austria 2021 online studio. Every digital floorboard here is secured by means of virtual uh, bolts, and we hope that digitally everything will stay safe as it has to be, as always at such events. So we wish to you and all of us an excellent meeting and a good sound quality. Before we hand over to the minister, just some information for you for the next two days, because it is worth it to stay tuned, not only today, but also tomorrow. In particular, we want to give you varied information. This is why from time to time we are going to leave this studio by means of features and moderations, because all our contributions actually take place out there by means of projects and in particular by means of commitment. This is why you will be listening to child reporters showing their world to you. You will listen to experts being out of practice for practitioners and they will also take you into their world by means of short videos. And we are looking forward to some keynotes around innovation is experienced, changed, and also circular economy. And today, we will also confer the Mission Innovation Austria Awards 2021. Behind me, you can already see the festive stage for that. We will take you on board towards the Tyrol and Upper Austria regional studios and you can just stay entirely relaxed. All you have to do is go to our landing page or to the YouTube channel, and you just have to click stream after stream for each of the slots. Because in between, we have prepared something for you which is extraordinary and which is quite often forgotten in virtual events, and that is to give you a real break so that you yourselves can also go outside for a quarter of an hour. Those who so wish can also talk to others during the breaks and after the event, and that in our MIA online forum. There, in writing by means of a chat or also with camera and microphone, you can talk to others. More about that a bit later. But now I'm not going to keep you any longer. I hand over virtually now to our Lady Minister for Climate Protection, Environment, Mobility, Climate and Technology, Leonore Gebesler. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm particularly happy to welcome you to this year's Mission Innovation Austria conference. Let me get started with some fundamental and strategic reflections. The key challenge of our era is the climate crisis, and we have a historic mandate to counteract this crisis. We know what has to be done. We have devised solutions how Austria can be made a climate-friendly country and Europe a climate friendly continent. Research, technological development and innovation are of central importance here. Austria by 2040 will be climate neutral and in 10 years time already 100% will come from renewables. A large step towards that is the EAG, the new legislation on the extension of renewables creating the organizational and legal framework and thus a long-term stable investment climate. In the next 10 years, 27 terawatt hours of renewables will be added. That is 1 million of PV roofs, biomass, wind power, green hydropower, and much more. This means a stepping up of today's renewables capacities by 50% and thus is a large investment program. In the next decade, furthermore, there will be an annual climate protection billion. By so doing, we will react not only to the omnipresent crisis, but we also create a new strategy in order to solve future problems. In the area of energy and environment technologies, we are having many internationally successful companies. Due to the long-term focus on innovation in energy, Austria is leading in many innovation topics, like the development of energy plus buildings or climate neutral urban development, or also in the question how energy systems and grids of the future have to be shaped. Now we have the opportunity to permanently implement new solutions. We are becoming climate pioneers. Time is ripe, it's urgent to change our climate uh, 
policy. We can't make any detours, and for that, R&D have to accompany us with a view to extensive innovation management. Investments we are making today will determine our climate impact for many decades. We have to clearly and wisely steer these decisions. In the field of innovation, the key challenges can be sustainably and fairly solved. And here, energy innovation is of utmost importance in order to reach 100% supply from renewables. So the conversion technologies have to be improved and be made even more powerful. But sectoral coupling has to be implemented as well. And systemic solutions have to be found so that renewables can be used optimally. Alongside with the massive extension of capacities, we also require solutions in order to see how 100% of renewables can be managed within the system. And so distributed systems can be used for the resilience of the entire system, but also states of supra and regional over and under coverage has to be mastered in the field of solar and wind. The control processes and new infrastructure will be decentralized, will take place in the regions. And here we have to make sure that people and the regions are major stakeholders in the value chains of future energy systems. And this transition has to be co-shaped and co-created by them, focusing on uh, citizens, communities, energy communities, and Joint energy consumption in the region are of key importance. With the FDI Living Lab initiatives, my ministry supports the idea to develop new solutions to extend and to try out more renewables in order then to come up with model solutions. Research, development and innovation are the key engines to clearly change society towards this. And this is also the topic of the first part of this event. But we have to think beyond that even in order to reach circular economy. My ministry has a new focus here. The idea is to have intensified product use to optimize use of resources and to close the circles. So our ministry has launched the Circular Economy Initiative. In this tender, the budget is some 10 million euro. This is another major topic which in the MIA conference we will work upon together with the colleagues from the Tyrol. Definitely all that is an engine of also sound business environment, particularly for Austria, since our competitive edge resides in quality and innovation power, particularly in today's situation. And after the crisis, it will be more and more important to see all of that in order to create more jobs. So we do require innovation into research and technology. By 2030, for instance, for green hydropower, 500 million euro are made available, thus granting our future and jobs in the industry. And more about green hydrogen will be explained tomorrow afternoon. And in the business package, of course, innovation and transformation are of crucial importance. With the funds for 2020 and 2021, our budget has been stepped up by almost a quarter. And that's a major evidence of what we do in this era of a crisis. Due to our ongoing FDI activities, local and national stakeholders are prepared at best for the Green Deal and its new dynamism in Europe. The annual conference Mission Innovation Austria is a major forum where all stakeholders of innovation are united and where they have an exchange on today's possibilities. Two days of conference are ahead of us, plus many side events during the year. And so our ministry with new online formats creates also a meeting point and a hub even during the time of COVID. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in Tyrol, which had been the initial idea, but still our thanks go to our conference partners Energy Tyrol and the Location Agency Tyrol for a very successful cooperation. Besides, Mission Innovation Austria Conference also is an internationally visible contribution to the global initiative Mission Innovation. The results will feed into the Minister's Summit in May. I wish to all of you a fascinating and enriching conference. Thank you very much, dear Lady Minister, for the very best wishes for this event. We will meet again for the Mission Innovation Austria Awards 2021.
Well, actually, this conference should have been a real face-to-face -face meeting in Tyrol, whereas now everything is digital and online. And this is why very soon we will have online greeting messages from Tyrol as well. And for the opening then for one hour, we will also hand over to our Tyrol colleagues. My colleague Tara Meyer will lead you through that part. At the end of each stream, you just have to change to the next one and you will be welcomed most cordially in Tyrol, for example. So from 12, opening from Tyrol and then two sessions around circular economy and everything derived from there in the afternoon. But now let's look forward to Josef Geisler's greeting message, Vice Governor of Tyrol. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear participants to this online conference, the initial plan had been to organize the Mission Innovation Week as early as last year in Tyrol, physically. We would have been very happy to welcome you in Tyrol at least this year. But now we are having an online conference and this of course limits our possibilities of a personal exchange, but it does not change anything to our perspective to become an energy self-sufficient Alpine region. And it does not change anything to our energy to reach that. Of course, we support the climate and energy targets of the European Union and Austria, but Tyrol goes even one step beyond that. The Tyrol government as early as 2014, that is before the Paris Climate Summit, decided to become energy autonomous by 2050. What does Tyrol 2050 energy self-sufficient mean in concrete terms? We want to cover our energy demand by 2050 from inland renewables only. The idea is full self-supply. We go beyond the climate neutrality, which Austria aims at by 2040. And in order to reach this goal, it is necessary to use all available resources, hydropower, photovoltaics, biomass, and even environment heat and process heat and also waste. And it's also necessary to step up energy efficiency and considerably and to more or less half Tyrol's energy demand. How can we achieve that? We have to extend our local renewables and we have to clearly reduce the energy demand. For so doing, we have used our technology scenario in order to have a scientific basis. More or less, this scenario is also our roadmap towards the energy transition. We have this roadmap in the field of economy and industry, and you will hear more about that during today's conference. Let me highlight the fact here that Tyrol 2050 energy autonomy is much more than an energy political goal. It is also a social process of transformation where from the very beginning we have endeavored to integrate the population 100%. The Tyrol energy transition also has a clear economic and regional dimension. We say goodbye to fossil fuels, which had been imported entirely. We want to create regional and national value chains and thus also create jobs. These major opportunities will be tapped, used and communicated from my perspective in the very today's era. This is of utmost importance in the very economy, energy transition, climate protection and sustainability have re reached full swing. A lot of innovation, research and particularly cooperation are taking place. Well, with Energie Tirol and the Location Agency, Tirol is a local partner to this conference. And I'm very happy to see that in a Tirol focus during this conference, we will show you some pioneers and lighthouse projects from Tirol, visionary building projects and communal initiatives and a lot in between. And one of my favorite playgrounds, that's the field of green hydrogen. And I'm very happy to see that here as well in Tyrol, there are many initiatives and innovative approaches, both for industrial applications and for mobility. So please stay tuned 
do have a look to your role 2050 energy autonomy here we are leading the way towards such an ambitious goal but here we have to work together on the one hand the boundary conditions have to be right and improved continually and here on the label of austria in the last few weeks and months there have been some major preparations and strategic decisions we also require research innovation and cooperation and the population has to be on board along this avenue every one of you of all of us can make a contribution and in this spirit i wish to this conference an excellent success and let me cordially invite you to pay a visit to Tyrol also physically as soon as possible and to have a look and see the manifold initiatives which exist towards an energy self-sufficient alpine region. The next guest this morning is a lady who you know, all of you, Theresia Vogel, Managing Director of the Climate and Energy Fund, an institution which helps make projects come true. She once told me what motivates her and her colleagues so much in her work, alongside with the topic of climate protection as such. It is joy and pride when you travel through Austria and you can read at so many places in good projects powered by Climate Fund. And just maybe as a spoiler for tomorrow morning, Theresia and I tomorrow will travel virtually by rail with you. We will not only speak about projects, but also show them to you and give a voice to people implementing things. But now first we have Theresia Vogel. She sits before a virtual background of the MIA. And tomorrow it will be the compartment of an Austrian railways train. Now it's MIA 2021 online. Dear Minister Gebesler, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good morning to all of you. It's a particular pleasure for me this time once again, together with the Climate and Energy Fund to be partner to the Mission Innovation Austria conference, this time online, but nevertheless, with a lot of pioneering innovations and solutions for climate protection made in Austria. With many impulses, so I hope, and with an outlook over the next two decades, climate neutrality by 2040 is the key perspective and goal. And with what we are seeing here today, we hope that by 2040, our minister can say Austria is free, free from fossils. It's an ambitious mission, obviously, not only because of our commitments as Austria towards the European and global community of states, but also out of pure necessity because Austria as an alpine area is massively hit by the climate crisis. We are witnessing an exorbitant temperature increase. We have heat waves causing many deaths year after year, and we also have rock slides, droughts, and floods. Many billions are lost and many lives are lost year after year. This price is too high, and that money also is missing elsewhere. There where we have to prepare a new and modern energy system for the future. Yes, indeed, out of pure necessity, we have to act, we have to accelerate the energy transition by extending the renewables, but it's also a major opportunity because Austria is a supplier of state-of-the-art technologies and ecological solutions made in Austria and technologies, innovative power and the political willpower are there even more so than ever before and new value chains have to be created new jobs after this covid crisis they are so dearly needed the mission innovation conference means innovation from austria and so together with our more than 30 support programs we try to exactly act where disruption and change is required where new things have to be brought about this is where the climate fund acts and this year once again you will find some of our projects again in the program and you will see some results and we are very happy and we ourselves we will speak about cities of tomorrow focusing on small cities or towns in austria urban regions and small towns 
which quite necessarily have high innovative power and which can very clearly use their resources and reduce their consumption and generate new solutions towards climate neutrality. By means of the host of all these small and medium-sized towns in Austria, can we reach climate neutrality in Austria? And urban development always means very long lead times. Two decades are even quite slim as a period. And so let me cordially invite you together with us tomorrow to go on a smart cities tour across Austria to many, many small towns and cities showing what is possible in the mobility transition, energy transition, and also climate change adaptation and mitigation. And I'm very happy to meet you for that tomorrow. It's another 20 years, almost by 2040. And by then we want to stay active together with you and do a lot in favor of this, our country. So let me invite you tomorrow, 9 a.m. on we go in the most recent rail jet train. So please, Come with us on that tour and see you soon. Now we will be speaking about a core topic which keeps all of us busy. Not only, but particularly in the field of climate and energy, that is innovation and change. Two aspects, as it were, which are intrinsically linked to each other. We have asked two keynote speakers to share their thoughts about innovation with experienced change. I'm looking forward particularly for the first one. It is Brigitte Bach, CEO of Salzburg AG. From her office, by means of a video, she will tell us which thoughts have kept her going, maybe have changed her way of thinking as well. Dear Lady Minister, dear Vice Governor, dear Therese, ladies and gentlemen, hello. I'm Brigitte Bach, CEO of Salzburg AG, and I'm very happy to deliver some input on the topics change, innovation and transformation. Let me get started with the topic of change. Change related to a highly complex topic, which is climate change. As you certainly know, due to CO2 emissions, which take place globally, we have a climate change with a temperature increase, a continuous increase of the average temperature, and this leads to extreme meteorological events, storms, floods, drought, heat, you name it, of course also an increase of the sea levels. Definitely there are two key strategic definitions as to how to tackle this. First, adaptation, second, mitigation. At any rate, we have to make it by around 2050 and have to reduce CO2 emissions virtually to zero. And this, of course, is a tall order and a highly complex target. How can we meet this challenge? It can, of course, only be done by means of innovation. Innovation, according to Peter Drucker, very clearly, is change towards a new dimension of performance criteria, or according to Schumpeter, innovation means to do things in a new way or to do new things. What do I mean by that? We require innovation, for instance, in connection with decarbonization in the technological area. You know all these success stories. There has been development in energy efficiency, for instance, of buildings. There have been many components, building components, windows, uh, heat pumps, passive houses, zero energy buildings, and so on. And PV has been developed and the efficiency has been increased considerably. And there have, has, have been technological learning curves, which mean that this technology now is much more affordable and easy to use. There is also innovation in decarbonization of transport and traffic. When we speak about e-mobility and soon about hydrogen mobility in heavy duty traffic and also for buses. But all of that even won't be sufficient. We need more, we need innovation also in economic areas. We have to also have innovation in the regulatory area. 
as we have it now in the EAG, the new legislation on renewables, where new energy communities are created. And there is more to all of this. All of that won't be sufficient in order to implement innovation and a series of innovation. We also need societal change, socio-economic and technological and societal transformation. That is an interaction of innovation as to their social acceptance in all sectors. How can that be done? Can it be learned by a society? Can it be practiced? Yes, of course, there are the so-called living labs, a methodology where we use certain segments in order to practice things. That's kind of a transformation literacy which can be achieved by so doing. What are those living labs? How do we see them? First, it's a research area, but it's more. They are also a certain methodology. And if we use the ENOLS definition, the European Network of Living Labs, it is very clearly an integration of citizens into the system there has to be a real life setting. It requires a multi-stakeholder participation and it also requires obviously most diverse methods which are used and more important, it requires cooperation and co-creation. That is different stakeholders like enterprises, company, governments and customers. What can all of that mean for research and in particular for application-oriented research? It does mean a new field of tasks. Societies have to be prepared for this process of uh, innovation in different kinds of living labs. What does it mean for all of us and for Salzburg AG? We are intensively working upon the extension of renewables, extension of e-mobility infrastructure, and of course, we also want to see new developments like the new renewable energies communities in a ready-to-use mode. And there is more. We will develop some settings for the living labs in order to try out together with our customers, customers being in the focus, which is so important, in order to actually offer things which meet with a lot of acceptance. And for all of us citizens, good news is that, of course, this huge transformation can be supported by accepting innovation, trying it out, and also de delivering feedback to society. In this very spirit, I wish to all of you a lot of fun and success in this very meeting, and I'm looking forward to meeting you again and to our discussions. Thank you. I believe I'm not exaggerating when I say the heart of the next keynote speaker is beating for several things. Climate, of course, the mission innovation, which he has accompanied when it had not even been given this name, but was the precursor of what we are witnessing today. Thirdly, his heart is beating for a project which he has shaped and accompanied himself, and by means of which he speaks about innovation and experience and lift change. Let's look forward to Albrecht Reuter for his keynote. Dear Minister Leonore Gebessler, dear Mr. Spanik, ladies and gentlemen, innovation is lift change. This is the title Michael Hübner more or less has dictated to me. Since we have understood that neither technological information nor incremental nor product or process information will be sufficient in order to reach the targets of the Paris Agreement. Lift and experienced change means that everything is about people, people carrying such innovation in no matter what way. Live it and experience it. And this takes us to step innovation or systemic innovation, which entails a major change. And let me get started with the key message of my paper. It's a clear plea for holistic, long-term living labs in order to live and experience innovation and changes 
link to it, which can thus be tried out. In order to explain this, we just make one step back the energy systems, which we know presently and which we have known for quite a while, are resources based fossil energy systems. We use a scarce good of a fossil resource, prepare it, convert it, fire it off in power plants and transport the energy produced via a certain distance. The main characteristic of the resource-based fossil energy system is that we have a limited resource we use in order to produce a good. And the more we use of that limited resource, the more expensive such good will be. This is what we all learned in the first semester at university in industrial management. In contrast to a resource-based energy system, we require for a 100% scenario a technology-based cellular ecosystem and by chance, you can see it here shown by means of a cell. The energy services in a cellular ecosystem are delivered on the basis of renewables. And the trick to that is that the more renewable technologies are built in, the more reduced the specific cost is and the better the specific efficiency is. Besides, we thus offer to many and multifold stakeholders to be integrated into the holistic system of energy and thus share the lot of all, because if one of that network doesn't do their job properly, all of them are concerned. What does that mean for the living labs? Living labs, conventionally speaking, are not sufficient in order to cover 100% renewables, which would be required for the Paris Agreement. The complexity goes far beyond technological and regulatory issues and questions. Because in a 100% scenario, many and manifold technological systems have to be networked. In the past and still today, we were faced with maybe just a dozen of large plants or units which we can maybe steer in a centralized manner, whereas in the future we will have millions and millions of plants we will have to network and control. All those systems have different owners and the high number of stakeholders is growing, of course, more and more on the small the contribution of an individual stakeholder may be, they also co-create and co-decide. Due to digitalization, prosumers in their buildings, cities and regions can also give and define new functions. System integration, sector coupling, will be required in order to go far beyond the energy sector in order to tap potentials for the 100% scenario. Technologically speaking, that's highly complex because we have to also understand the volatility of what is available and the stochastic character of the energy use. They have to coincide. Reaction time here is extremely short-lived. Whereas, on the other hand, we have to make long-term and expensive investment decisions over many decades because the cost is very high, whereas then later on the running cost is very low. The interaction of networks, grids and markets has to grant a stable provision and supply instead of all its diversity. As we have known it for decades, these are the challenges. How do I see such a living lab? You know the typical real labs or living labs, which normally are technology-based 
power to X, storage, consumer technologies. The name of the game nowadays is hydrogen technologies and also the regulatory framework in the typical living labs, yet within certain limits. They are also tried out and this is certainly also a very important aspect and we also have to add that there are some disadvantages also and those disadvantages have to be compensated and so we can only convince customers to a limited extent so that they also offer their capacities. Sometimes living labs are also complemented, for instance, by market mechanisms, particularly in bottleneck management. The security principles are, of course, a part of all these real or living labs, but I believe they are not given their due. In the 100% scenario, the microgrid security is key at the interconnection point and towards the grid of higher order privacy, trans transaction reliability and sustainability are key as well. What I want to see is living labs of a holistic approach where participation is number one in order to create the movement in a real living environment of buildings, cities, landscapes. Part of that, of course, also is governance principles which we try out in order to make stakeholders cooperate and co-create in living labs in order to strengthen the energetic efficiency and movements. Why do I say so? Why I'm a project leader of the C sales project and that's part of the Syntec project of the Federal Ministry of the Economy in Germany. Syntec have five windows which can be used everywhere in Germany, five showcases, if you will. The south, of course, is pampered by a lot of sunrise. In the north, it's rather the home of wind energy and in the Lausitz area and in the former eastern Germany, we are faced with major problems, meaning structural change and decommissioning of coal-fired power plants. Four years, 2017 to 2020, more than 200 million. Here you see all these figures. I'm not going to read all of this to you. In total, in Bavaria, Baden-Württemberg, and Hesse, 30 million inhabitants are to be reached by us. The EBIT is 77 million with 72, 42 partners plus 15 associated ones. We have 2,900 people trying everything out, 700 without Franklin, and we have 52 sample solutions or blueprints, seven blueprints, precisely. What then is the key component, the autonomy cell, which is characterized by a delimited system of buildings, neighborhoods, industrial neighborhoods or regions. Energy production, storage and use are here in the focus. Each cell has an aggregation function and what we see is of course the use of energy. Each cell is autonomous in itself as regards decisions and it uses the autonomy in an energy management system. The cell is not alone, it's of course networked with the neighboring cells and the entire grid and exchanges energy, flexibility and also some euros with the neighboring cells. The cell is embedded into the other cells, creates markets via energy exchange, not only electricity but energy in general via an information exchange interfaces being used for that and of course also for commercial activities. What then is an autonomy cell in practice shown here 
by Lyman close to Heidelberg as an example. The autonomy lab in Lyman is the demo example here. There are local operators which are interrelated, communicate with each other. Then there is also a tuning cascade, which is an automated communication system from the transmission grid via different items towards the autonomy cell itself. The operator gets a certain promise as to a ceiling and floor of performance, meaning that within that bandwidth, the autonomy cell will be operated. And this is done by means of the autonomy cell imminent management system. This then can also be used for bottleneck management, there is a simplified possibility of market participation and thus we reach active participation and integration of all the participants, which then technologically speaking relate to the information management system and uses that as its basis. What commercial possibilities and possibilities of action are available. We have the regional market, so-called preference trade, where, for instance, in one cell, respect can send or sell her power to Mr. Meyer. And for that, she uses a platform for regional trade. And now, at the latest, it is clear that this can only be an interrelated system. And of course, I do not understand politicians. Why don't they use that much better? Because all prosumers are, of course, a potential source. In my post-engineer career as a politician, I can clearly see how thousands of prosumers would vote for me if I uh, he chose such a career. Second, we have the central or system-based trade where we have intersectoral optimization in uh, Franklin-based cells. And the third one is the grid-based trade where we are in the third phase, and that is a market-based grid bottleneck management. For instance, in Eastern Bavaria, where we have a platform in order to uh, make available these facilities. This is a total picture of just one excerpt of such living labs, which we have been using Mannheim, Schwäbisch Hall, ON10, Harzerloh, you name it, everything within seed cells. Do pay a visit to us and come see us in our energy cells. And everyone knows it by now. C cells also has founded a running or jogging club. We meet at least once a year for a relay marathon. And the next possibility will be on the 14th of June, early at 7 a.m. in the so-called C cells run at Osjach, Carinthia at the start of the Energy Talks conference in Ossia, Carinthia, Austria. Thank you and every success for your conference. Trying out the energy transition, buzzword living labs. This is a major pathway towards shaping the future and trying it out before. This is also the perspective of Claudia Kempfert, our speaker. Living labs are a key element towards the practice of the energy transition because they are a chunk of such practice. Now we want to give a voice to people speaking out of practice for practitioners. And for that, we have prepared several features. First, in the field of best practice, the green energy lab. The future requires courageous and new ideas for an environment worth living in. Many innovative individual solutions from energy pioneers of Austria are already in the pipeline. But still, there is a long way to go. The Green Energy Lab is Austria's largest innovation lab for sustainable energy solutions. 
It is based on its four founding members, Energy Burgenland, Energy Steiermark, Styria, EVN and Wien Energy from Vienna. The Green Energy Lab presently is a magnet for more than 200 partner institutions and bundles knowledge for more than 30 projects with a total investment volume of more than 80 million euro. These partners cover the entire innovation chain, research, technology, energy agencies, and citizen communities. The partners to the Green Energy Lab develop and try out sample solutions for the green energy future. The best ones of those pilot projects are to enter the market as soon as possible, because only by so doing can we contribute considerably to the energy transition. For us in the Green Energy Lab, it's so important to integrate the citizens. The four lenders, Vienna, Austria, Burgenland and Styria, accommodate five million inhabitants. Green Energy Lab fosters projects to actively integrate them into innovation. With the Green Energy Lab, we have developed a role model region for the energy future. Cooperation across enterprises of the four utilities within the Green Energy Lab is unique. In its current. If we all are convinced that no one can do the energy transition alone, we have to interact. The challenge of the energy transition, protecting the climate, reducing CO2 emissions, the Green Energy Lab meets all these challenges. If we make it and can convince even those being most skeptical, we will have a future worth living in. That's the specificity of the Green Energy Lab, we integrate consumers and we develop for the customers. We deal with the following question, what can I do as a citizen and what does innovation in energy mean to me and my everyday life? The Green Energy Lab, November 2020, the Green Future Hackathon was organized in order to speak about future energy systems. 20 participants, students, technological professionals and creative engineers work together upon complex concepts in a 24-hour Green Future Hackathon. The idea is to have a climate-neutral Austria by 2040. In order to do that, the best people are required. Some of these showed at the Green Future Hackathon that they can work together. The topic is a key topic. How do we want to live in the future? How do we deal with our planet? And some of the teams have worked upon this highly successfully. And only because of COVID, which reduces our leeway, will we certainly not accept borders in thinking. Everything can be done and the concepts presented are all important. The idea platform for energy communities won the award. The team of the winners presented a prototype of a platform for the better organization of energy communities around green energies in an affordable and optimum way of use. It means fairness and transparency in energy. Co-creation, innovation and partnership are the buzzwords of the Innovation Lab. The Green Energy Lab is convinced of the transformation of the energy system which can only succeed if we all work Green together. Energy Green Energy Lab, Austria's largest innovation laboratory for renewable energies. Now, two guests of ours will talk you through a project which more or less started small and has then turned bigger. 
The onset comes from Adi Gross. He's not only a politician, but also an outstanding expert in the field of energy and climate protection. After that, Christoph Drexel will talk us through the details of the project. Well, as early as 2009, Vorarlberg defined the goal of complete supply from renewables, that is climate neutrality. That was innovation already, but the key challenge is, of course, not to define ambitious goals, but rather to implement them. And for that, some new approaches are required, which go beyond individual segments. Research and innovation, both in the area of new technologies and also social innovation. For instance, how can we have better lives and consume less energy? That requires new ways of cooperation, which are to be tried out. And this is the approach of the Drexel, where we try to use as a basis some technological possibilities. Everything is data-oriented, we develop some possible ways of acting, technical and physical solutions, and even efficiency analysis and new ways of living. All that can also be seen by buildings, because energy consumption depends on energy efficiency, but also on how you live within a dwelling, which areas you use, where it's located, how mobility is lived. How can we run such a unit most efficiently and supply energy to it? This means that the entire energy system has to be transformed. In a today's project, we are trying to analyze this question for an entire village. This way of thinking in the context of real life scientific, technological and socially innovative spheres of life are to be married and this is a key prerequisite so that climate neutrality can be achieved and fast. Ladies and gentlemen, let me get started with a lighthouse project, an energy self-sufficient multifamily house at Brücken Energy self-sufficient means no oil, no gas, no fuels, and also it's not hooked up to the grid. All the energy comes from the own PV system on the roof and on the facades of the building. Hydrogen storage and also heat storage. The waste heat is used by the conversion processes of electrolysis and fuel cells. The house is also characterized by a very low heat demand, it has a comfort ventilation in order to reduce heating and it also uses a heat pump system. In that connection, it is very important to see that energy self which is achieved is not an end in itself. It's not enough that people can say, I need no power from anywhere else, but it's a major contribution towards solving our winter power problem, which will become more important even in our latitudes because PV and hydropower are of course summer dominated forms of energy and we do not have enough winter dominated energy carriers. It is of course possible to use all the experience which we gather from that project in order to make the project even slimmer and more easy to afford. Now we are scaling this up in Vorarlberg and we have an entire village, 800 inhabitants, and that's an energy self-sufficient community. So everyone having a PV system can also deliver energy to their neighbors. Of course, we extend PV systems, we have biogas, we have a biomass heating system also for electrification. Energy is produced in a sufficient manner without even having to use regional hydropower in the land of Vorarlberg. Our approach is demands of heat and electrical energy are simulated and as one variant, we also convert mobility entirely to e-mobility and then we optimize all these sources and we define how much biomass energy and how much PV is the optimum if we have to have seasonal storage by means of hydrogen. 
It is very important that it's not only about renewables, but also about a contribution coming from efficiency in itself. What is the impact if mobility is immobility, if the existing buildings are renovated, at least most of them, and if heat demand maybe is halved? But what is also the impact if we have individual mobility? For instance, a contribution to sufficiency. What does all of that mean as regards the cost of such a system? Such innovation is part of a total picture. We call it big picture climate. This is a scenario which we have configured as an association. It's the Verein Klima 4, an association which has been existing for more than a year in Vorarlberg, created by the civil society, 150 members, many highly committed people. What do we do in that big picture climate? We analyze all realms of life in order to see where emissions are generated and how we can reduce them. The colors of the fields describe the way of the emissions sector and the pins are individual modules I'm going to talk you through briefly. What does this association do? We have technical working parties, we organize events, awareness raising campaigns towards climate neutral life, we also comment topics of local politics and we also have a platform which is a platform of all say drivers of climate neutrality. This project which I've been describing is also a working party of all members of the platform. Minus 90% of greenhouse gas emissions is the target. This is very white here. All the multicolored areas do not exist any longer. And the modules are renewables, efficiency and sufficiency. There is also kind of a job profile, meaning what has to be done, what are the requirements, what are the co-benefits some nice secondary effects and where are possible conflicts. It seems to be important also to see that this technological innovation is urgently needed. Energy research is so important so that we can find solutions. But it's also important to stress the fact that technology alone will not bring solutions. We need a societal change as well in order to reach climate neutrality, in order to hold global warming. Thank you very much for listening. Now on we go to Tyrol and in the middle of the forest and a successful spin-off of a university. You will not only hear about the project but also about how a spin-off works but more about that for the protagonists themselves. MCI Director Professor Andreas Altmann, I would say the companion of the second guest of that round of practice, Marcel Huber of Syncraft. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andreas Altmann. As a rector, I'm head of MC, the Entrepreneurial University, and university which was created 25 years ago as an outpost of Innsbruck University, further developed in a group together with the land of Tyrol, the provincial capital of Innsbruck, the social partners, Chamber of Economy, Chamber of Labor, Association of Industrialists. And our task is to use scientific knowledge and to translate that from research into practice and that in teaching, in further education, and mainly and chiefly in competence transfer, because know-how is made available not only to the scientific community by means of publications, but know-how is also translated into startups, into development, into competitiveness of companies, into growth value added at the location and internationally. And today I'm going to talk you through an example of our first startup, which emanated from this, our idea. Some 15 years ago, we developed a technology as to how we can use our research work in the field of biomass, how we can use the wood gas from wood chips 
how we can extract it and use it in ecological power plants. More details will be delivered now by the very startup, by Syncraft. Syncraft, a very clever and internationally positioned company. In the meantime, we more or less accompanied the IP, the patent which emanated from that research activity together with Marcel Huber and his team, then scientific advisor, and free of charge, we made available that patent to the startup. We operated it in risk sharing, but we got 10% as a stake in the company. In the, in the meantime, we have developed together in research and development, and that company was created, which last but not least due to its excellent team but also due to research and promotion the institutions ffg aws land of the world caric and others they all have supported us because what it takes at the beginning is promotion and subsidies and then of course results are necessary so please do enjoy marcel huber he will explain what syncraft means thank you very much and all the best to you Thank you, Andreas, for this kind introduction. Let me tell you who I am. I'm Marcel Huber. I'm one of the founding members of the Syncraft company. In the meantime, also managing director of it. The most fascinating idea in startups or spin-offs always is that there is a very first idea. And then there is a long way until a ready-made product in the meantime, it's a span of more than 10 years of the existence of such products. And there are so many tiers, so many steps in between which require boundary conditions, like a university environment allowing for such a development, being conducive to it. And it also takes boundary conditions like A plus B centers or AWS in a seed finance or research promotion projects. Without all of those, it would never have been possible to, for instance, make our reverse power plant. And the key milestones are that at the very beginning, you more or less have to make a sprint. But then, very soon, you discover that it's not a sprint, but rather a marathon. And the purpose is not just to overcome one or two hurdles. It's an ongoing process. You fall and you rise again and you learn from that. So together with an incredible team, after in the meantime, more than 10 years, we have made it. And we have developed and built a power plant that is a reverse-oriented a backward-oriented energy system. And for that, we have an excellent movie, very well describing it. Last year, when we won the Trigos Prize, we made that video, it shows nicely what we do, who we are, and where our trip is to go. Everything started in 2007, when a team of process engineers had the vision to develop a revolutionary and renewable energy system. That was the birth of Syncraft. After seven years, in 2014, the first modern and efficient reverse power plant went to the grid. We do climate positive wood fired power plants from wood chips, they produce energy, power, and heat. And there is a third product also, that is charcoal. Charcoal, more or less, withdraws from the atmosphere CO2 via the plant. If such CO2, that coal, is not fired off, but used in the soil, you more or less extract by means of our energy system from the atmosphere, just as a byproduct, CO2. We call that climate positive or CO2 negative energy system. Such carbon is also stable in the soil and remains there. It's a natural component which can store nutrient and thus reduces fertilizers, enhances the soil and thus also increases harvest yield. It's so diverse 
that it can also clear wastewater, so it can be used as a filter. But there is more to this. Syncraft have one more trump up the sleeve. In conventional systems, normally ash remains, but we use ash in order to produce a valuable material which can be used as a fertilizer also in agriculture. That is to say, as a matter of fact, I have a zero emissions power plant, which can even give something back. When we speak about energy systems, we speak about hundreds or thousands of households, which can be hooked up to one power plant, but everything against the background of climate positive systems and always on the basis of charcoal. It's always important that the form of energy is also applied and used. Nothing is wasted. Heat, power, coal are used and it's meaningful and even fun, ecologically and economically. In 2020, Syncraft has as many plants as in the first 10 years. First, the biggest of them in Japan, but the success story is only at its beginning. The vision is clearly defined. We have started in a global context in order to make this true. And this is what Syncraft do with their reverse power plant. An ecological of energy production. This is the purpose of climate neutrality and that by 2050. Now you will meet someone who you certainly know, because he's on every stage which speaks about climate and energy projects. He's an entrepreneur, highly active, and his keyword is even part of the thing we will be speaking about, act for energy. In the movie, Andreas Schneemann will tell you more about their ideas and how they implement it in practice. Solar plants on roofs or along motorways, windmills on mountain ridges and biomass heating plants in one's own community. Renewable energies mostly are produced in a decentralized manner. In the future, we want to have a CO2 free economy, meaning all the energy demand has to be covered 100% from renewables. For that, we require regional energy systems. Solar and wind energy are not available continuously, and thus a future energy system has to be more flexible. This can be done first by intelligent coupling of producer and consumer, second by conversion between different forms of energy like electricity, power and heat. By so doing, the regionally produced energy can be used mainly locally and thus supra-regional grid capacity can be saved. Integrated regional energy systems are resilient and even more affordable in the long run. Sustainable energy supply is a key challenge for the city of the future. At the same time, in cities and towns, there are many possibilities of shifting energy sectors and coupling them closely. Supply 100% from renewables does not only mean a contribution towards energy conservation and nature conservation, but energy sufficiency is much more stable. City of the Future, a project of our ministry, is an extensive research project which offers solutions for decarbonization and climate change in our cities and demonstrates them. Applied research here embarks upon new avenues and by using new technologies and system combinations, there is an essential contribution towards a climate neutral city of the future worth living in. Concrete projects are subsidized and promoted and so-called innovation labs, which grant open access to research infrastructure and the latest state of the art in knowledge and research. Via innovation labs, final customers and enterprises are actively integrated into the process of innovation.
Wir sind das Innovationslabor, um die Region zu We are the Zukunft Innovation Laboratory for the City of the Future, for best provision from renewables. In the next few years, in energy supply, there will be major changes for optimum use and change to e-mobility, many more steps of innovation will be required. For an energy supply based on renewables, decentralized modular solutions are required. This can be done by using digital energy systems and by demonstrating them with ACT for Energy, we want to be a role model internationally for such a decentralized system on the basis of optimum use of renewables. ACT for Energy is an initiative of the Federal Ministry of Climate Protection. The project is City of the Future and there are many activities around regional energy systems. The Innovation Lab initiates and accompanies such projects in order to try out new solutions and new systems. Together with our partners from outstanding companies of the energy and innovation industry, we work upon common strategies. By solving, we identify main challenges upon energy systems of the future and their performance. We show meaningful and economical solutions and thus we define the target which we want to achieve together with all our community. In our strategy we focus on new innovative solutions which are intersectoral for power, heat and mobility. Since renewable energies are produced decentrally, it's a closely woven and highly complex energy system. Without digital communication within the system, the energy produced can't be used optimally. In ACT for Energy, we also integrate all stakeholders and users via energy communities or our energy account. It's important for us that everyone has a say in energy transition. In the future, with the energy communities, we want to have communities which produce, store and use energy locally. Beyond, we can help actively promote new investment. As a first user of new technology, by means of financial support or by the feedback, based on our experience. With the Act for Energy Innovation Lab region, we have the optimum test bed for innovation and new technologies. The idea is to implement renewable energy supply to the region and the city of the future. Here and in the region, we are already seeing a lot of renewable energy which we produce, but quite often energy is not used when it's being produced. Used. Due to intelligent networking of consumers and producers, we thus create a win-win situation. Here we succeed in covering the local energy consumption, even increase it, but also drop cost. I can only support this as best I can because this grants secure energy supply from renewables. For the flexibilization of energy systems, we will have to focus on new and mainly innovative storage capacities. For that, we use conventional stationary storage systems like heat and cold storage and also new systems for future mobile systems like batteries of e-vehicles with a view to the holistic system. So each of us can contribute to stabilizing our energy system and saving energy cost. So as to use regionally produced energy from renewables, all sectors, power, heat, mobility, have to be seen in a holistic model. The mobility sector for us plays a crucial role. This is why in the Innovation Lab Act for Energy, we have different charging infrastructures, paid systems and different ways of using e-vehicles are being tried out in our lab. We launch innovation, we accompany, this is among our key tasks, so we work with startups and research organizations and also we try to demonstrate everything and try it out in a real environment. With the concepts and solutions developed by us, we want to be a role model for some other regions 
in Austria and in Europe. We want to motivate everyone to devise and implement new solutions for the world. Whether you are a startup or an innovative enterprise wanting to promote a new service or product, or whether you are a private investor, we are always happy to have you on board. Please tell us who you are or please meet us at one of our events because the energy system of the future requires a lot of courageous people trying to pave the way for the future together with us. In the last round, in this very field, we will take you along up to a mountain. Stay relaxed, it's not exhausting, it's only a movie. But before that, we will be listening to what is behind NEFI, why that is best practice, and what it has to do with skiing. First, let's get started at the home office of the AIT. Hello to all of you. Together I'm going to talk you through an overview of the model region, new energy for industry. I'm Wolfgang Schrebernick, head of the NEFI cluster, and at the Austrian Institute of Technology, I'm in charge of the Center for Energy. NEFI's intention is to develop solutions and technologies in order to change the Austrian industrial sector as to decarbonization. So we have an enormous lever here because as you can see here from the slide, one third of the final energy consumption stems from industry in Austria. We have two highly industrial countries, Upper Austria and Styria, that was the starting point of NEFI and its so-called cluster steering committee, which was founded. The Austrian Institute of Technology is involved, the University of Mining of Styria, the Upper Austrian Energy Efficiency Institution and the Energy Agency. The idea is the 100% decarbonization of energy systems and also development of technologies allowing for that in order also to stand the test on the global market. What can we do? On the one hand, in efficiency first, potentials have to be lifted, meaning, for instance, waste, heat and new processes like heat pumps and also renewables, production and integration in order to more or less get out of the system fossil energy carriers. We develop our solutions by means of so-called innovation fields of a technological and systemic nature. Presently, we are counting 17 NEFI projects with a subsidized sum of some 24.6 million euro. And as to the leverage, it's the same amount, more or less, of private investment. You can always become a part of NEFI. We have an open innovation process where, based on web analysis, we try to identify blind spots in order to develop projects. We unite technology makers and users, we develop projects and then also use them in demo versions. Here you see the demographical and geographical distribution. We are not only in Upper Austria and Styria, but all over Austria. On the right side, you see a list of new projects of ours, which we launched recently. More info on our detailed website. One project we are wanting to show you is the Clean Energy for Tourism project where the energy intensive sector is to be decarbonized, that is winter tourism, clean energy for tourism under Stephanie Gwitz of Salzburg AG, and she will tell us more. We try to change ski lifts, pumps, snow making guns, and also the catering industry in a monitoring program in order to get a feel for how much energy there is. Then we develop optimization algorithms in order to step up efficiencies, lifting internal potentials, and also optimizing the energy markets. Because when prices are low, this means that a lot of renewables is in the system. And this means less CO2, and that's our very idea. So we have PV systems, for instance, producing uh, 
power, which is stored at the Wiesbach power plant during summer and is made available during winter time. One milestone of the project was reached last summer at the Schmittenhöhe skiing area. First, the pumps for the storage pond for the snowmaking system used a project developed algorithm. This means that the values of the pump are measured and flexibilities of the skiing resort are released. The algorithm then determines the optimum regime of the pumps and Salzburg AG trade the volume of power which is needed which is then used at the resort. In energy for tourism, the energy management of ski areas is optimized and renewables are used more and more. At the end of my short paper, let me cordially invite you to our first NIFI conference on the 6th and 7th of May this year online. There will be scientific contributions and discussions. More info can be found at our website, nefi.at. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible for our projects and events. Thank you. All these examples are the first steps towards living labs. But this is only the beginning. There is much more to come. And we are also excited to listen to your ideas. After that much information, now you have deserved a little break. So please do relax. On we go at 11 a.m. For that, just click the next live stream on the MIA website or directly on the MIA YouTube channel. Now, just get yourself some fresh air or maybe some nice coffee. And if you want, you can log into our virtual lobby and meeting point. In between, we prepare everything for the MIA awards. And please look forward also to a speaker. She is the lady who is always present in every broadcast speaking about climate, energy, you name it. Professor. Claudia Kempfer of the DIW. So, see you soon and don't forget to click because there is a lot more info you, positively speaking, obviously. Welcome back after this first real break and we very much hope that you have enjoyed this real break and you have digested what you have heard and seen so far during the MIA 2021 online. But maybe you had also some fun in your exchange at the virtual MIA forum. But the most important thing is that you are back here. In about one hour's time, we have the next change of stream. And then a mouse click will send you to the next stream to the land of Tyrol. And since we want to hand over to the colleagues as punctual as possible, let's get started immediately. You can win something if you perform. What this is about will now be explained by the Federal Minister Leonore Gewessler. We have a common goal, economic recovery and climate protection. The two are to be married now and by 2040 climate neutrality in Austria. Research and innovation and the rapid market dissemination of environment and energy technologies are key elements to reach that goal. So this year again, it is one of my key intentions to confer the national award for the best and most innovative submissions. They will be awarded the National Austrian Prize. I confer the national award environment technology in the following three categories, each of them being most important. Environment and climate, research and innovation, and for the first time, circular economy and resources efficiency. Please do submit your submissions by June 4, ecotechnology.at in order 
to win this highest distinction in this very field. Please, I'm looking forward to your submissions of services innovation for the National Award 2021. Well, so if you want, please be on board and submit your project. Next topic, I had said it before, the large TV broadcasters, if they want to have an expert speaking about our very topic, she is always number one, Professor Claudia Kempfert of the Berlin DIW. So we are very happy that she has accepted our invitation to deliver a keynote with the title Economic Perspective of an Intelligent Energy Transition. Sounds fascinating, and so it is. So I hand over to her on our virtual stage. Dear Lady Minister, ladies and gentlemen, a cordial welcome to all of you. This will be my keynote on the topic of economic opportunities of an intelligent energy transition and innovation entailed by it. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks to Mission Innovation Austria. This is a very important topic for us, and I'd like to talk about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that today's COVID crisis is a huge problem to all of us. We learn day after day that today's health crisis is of severe impact, and this definitely is the case. Presently, we are also in a profound economic crisis. We have to and we want to get out of it with economic subsidies and support we make available. But the next large crisis, and you can see it here, is already ahead of us. That's the climate crisis, which for 40 years has been looming and we have to do everything so that we can master three crises and kill, so to speak, three crises with one stone. This means economic crisis, energy crisis, climate crisis and health crisis. And let me try to tell you how we can succeed in so doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is that the global surface temperature has to be stabilized at a certain level, has to be decreased if possible, and the maximum increase can be 1.5 degrees or clearly below 2 degrees centigrade at least. This is what we have enshrined into the Paris Agreement and this is a global commitment. Well, if we see what happens around the globe politically, there are some good and sound steps also in Europe, the Green Deal, as it were, or in the United States, where the new president presently has launched some important measures in favor of climate improvement. And there are many countries having subscribed to climate neutrality by the corresponding steps. But still, we see that all of that still is not enough. Much more has to happen so that we can achieve that goal. Meaning, with today's political measures, we will not make do. That is why it is so important that we counteract the trends and implement many more measures in order to drop emissions clearly. How can we succeed in so doing? Let me talk you through an overview when we have a look at which areas contribute to this, contribute to us tapping emissions, lowering potentials. Here you see two key components which are responsible for that and should be tackled. First, energy efficiency improvement, that is saving energy in all areas and a clear extension of renewable energies. You can also see that all sectors contribute to emissions, in particular the sector of buildings, but also transport and traffic, and of course power and electricity and industry. And these components mean that on the one hand, we have to do everything in order to increase energy efficiency clearly, and on the other hand, renewables are to be fostered and promoted, meaning they have to be used immediately in all areas where that is required. All of that can mean that to a large extent, we can reduce emissions, replace fossils by renewables, 
and do everything in order to save energy, as it were. If we see economic support and subsidies of nowadays, we also see that on the one hand, we clearly have also economic support for a socio-economic or green transformation, but not uh, to a sufficient extent. We see very clearly that a large part of economic support is dedicated to non-green areas, that is to say, still to maintain fossil and also fissile, that is nuclear economy. And on the other hand, also economic support is granted, for instance, to rail-bound traffic infrastructure or public passenger transport or e-mobility. So part of all of that is actually spent for the socio-economic transformation which is needed. In Europe, this happens also within the framework of the new Green Deal, where estimations speak of about 40% of economic support, which, which is actually channeled into the green areas. Even that is not sufficient. It means that we see a clear transformation which has to be implemented. And, ladies and gentlemen, we have to embark upon the avenue of full supply from renewables. In the next 10 years, this target has to be implemented also on the political level so that we can use a pathway which more or less in the past has been a political project. This means out of nuclear and fossil energies. And the motto is we have to pave the way towards that, whereas nowadays we have to have a politically supported energy transition project where the entire energy system is to be converted. And the motto is now that the target is more important than the way towards it, because at the end what we need is 100% energy system from renewables. And the avenue towards there, I'm going to talk you through it. We know from our research work that 100% from renewables in all sectors is not only technologically feasible, it's also economically efficient. And we do see that the energy system cost of 100% supply from renewables is clearly lower than an energy system which relies on fossil energies, including damage to climate and environment, or even nuclear energy, which causes enormous cost in terms of national economy. Renewables, and this is good news, are getting cheaper and cheaper. You also see it here on this slide. On the one hand, it's wind offshore and also wind onshore and solar energy. We should also speak about storage options, in particular battery storage systems. They are getting more and more affordable as well. So Californian studies of today show that 100% with wind energy, solar energy plus batteries is technologically feasible and costs much more than any other energy system. This clearly is good news. So we are already where we want to be and these technologies can be used and affordably. Within the framework of several studies, we have looked into this as to the very European energy supply and that by means of a project which has looked into what it means to have 100% from renewables in all European countries. That has been intensively analyzed and researched and let me talk to you some of the major findings. First, and you see it here, graphically shown emissions, CO2 emissions, have to be brought down to zero, and this by 2040 at the latest, if we have 100% supply from renewables, and if we can trigger this process even today. And you see it here on the right side of the axis, if we replace fossils by renewables. Two things will happen. First, emissions and greenhouse gases go to zero, and second, the primary energy consumption goes down clearly. Why is that so? As I said at the beginning, renewables are more efficient. We save a lot of energy when immediately using eco-electricity. 
be it for mobility or be it for energy in buildings, for instance, e-vehicles, railbound vehicles or passenger cars or also heat pumps in buildings. So eco power, if it's used immediately, efficiency first and eco energy first, that means that the primary energy demand will be halved. And that is good news number one. Good news number two is that a sufficient quantity of renewables does exist today already in order to entirely cover this primary energy demand. Technologies are there, they are getting cheaper and cheaper, and they just have to be interwoven in such a way that we have 100% supply from renewables. Here, in the right part of the graph, you see the split renewables in an intelligent combination with each other as team players so that full supply is made possible and also security of supply is granted. This means that we can achieve it and this is shown by a model study for all of Europe. It shows clearly that we have an increase of renewables which we need. Solar energy, wind power and also some other forms of renewables. In all countries, full supply is possible by model simulations with an hourly basis. Even we can prove that at every second during a year, this is possible. As explained before, the primary energy demand goes down clearly, but power demand goes up. So power demand goes clearly up, which is due to the fact that eco power is used elsewhere in the so-called sectoral coupling. Two things happen. First, the power demand grows, which is covered from renewables, and on the other hand, the use of fossil energies goes down to zero, and nuclear energy disappears entirely from the system after some decades. So this can be made possible as 100% supply and we see that from 2040 there is also some storage demand amounting to some 15 to 20 percent. So here as well and there is no excessive uh, demand but only to a certain extent. This means that renewables will have to be extended faster than envisaged. In Germany, for instance, a faster growth rate of wind and solar is necessary in Austria as well, where potentials are huge. And the extension rate has to be at least doubled so that 100% supply is made possible. A system based on renewables comes with clearly different requirements than conventional systems. Let me briefly show you why. Have a look here at the right side of the slide. You see that in purple you have the old system, in green the new one. The previous system is based on large size power plants uh, like coal, nuclear or others which make power or heat available and deliver it in a top-down approach. On the right side, however, you see the new energy system focusing on renewables. It's much more flexible and decentralized and interactive. So you do not only have the plants producing power and heat and deliver it to the final consumer, but you also see that the final consumers become prosumers and so it's not only a top-down but also a bottom-up process which is launched and both are intertwined. What do we need for that? Intelligent grids, an intelligent storage system, a smart networking by means of digitalization which is the name of the game and a must. You need a flexibilization in particular of the power market. You need intelligent grids, intelligent power grids where everything is intertwined, meaning smart meters also and some smaller units like prosumers, like small unit storage systems which have to interact, like for instance cooperatives or small companies. All of that is in interaction so that such flexibility is actually made possible. And for that innovation is required and such innovation is what we need when we speak about energy transition and wise opportunities of it. Just two examples. On the one hand, and shown here, it's the so-called smart grid, 
which is the digitalization of power grids, high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage. You see the individual components and how they interact. You also see which individual components are required for that, so that that can succeed intelligently. On the right side, you see the urban connected mobility, meaning digital access for customers, mobility as a service, as we call it. There again, digitalization is of crucial importance and we need it so that this solution can also be implemented on the basis of sectoral coupling and the energy transition. All of this means we require enormous investment due to the modernization, on the one hand, of renewing the capital stock, infrastructure and structural change, and digitalization. Growing public investment for that will be and is necessary in order to also add private investment. We see clearly and know it from our studies that one billion euro, for instance, can come from public investment. One billion euro should be or will be private investment and even two billion euro will be triggered in terms of private capital in the field of environment protection, housing, education and infrastructure for the very areas that is where we most require them. So such investment creates innovation and even more creates knowledge capital and this is what we need for modernization not only in companies when we speak about intangible assets knowledge capital licenses intellectual property and also the modernization of industry and economy in total so here we require such investment for the modernization and innovation the individual components of knowledge capital are so important, particularly in the field of national economy, so that energy transition and transport transition can happen. We see in a comparison that Austria in the very field of services and lifting knowledge capital in services is very well positioned and much better than Germany even, but also in the field of industry there is a lot of potential. And this is what all of this is about. We have to create boundary conditions in order to tap such knowledge capital. The last part of my paper, ladies and gentlemen, will talk you through economic perspectives of all of this. This potential is huge and has to be tapped accordingly. We know from research that there is enormous economic opportunities in value added, in value creation directly, if all of this is implemented on the spot by uh, profit, by taxes which are paid, and by indirect value creation effects as well. They are of utmost importance and in the very regions. The market volume is huge, not only as relates the field of energy production, distribution, storage, energy efficiency and digitalization, but also in the very field of sustainable mobility, circular economy and sustainable water management. So here there are enormous market opportunities which on the one hand have a regional effect and on the other one also an enormous competitive edge for national economies. Innovation is required and is the key factor to reach these goals. It is about maintaining and improving systemic relevance and thus resilience in the very era of today by decentralized energy transition and extension of renewables, energy saving, strengthening uh, energy, overcoming investment weakness by using digital broadband networks, by extending e-charging infrastructures for sustainable mobility, green hydrogen technology, which is of crucial importance as well for the very industry and here particularly in Austria and in total of course e-mobility which is to be fostered and promoted. So ladies and gentlemen, we can kill three birds with one stone. The economic crisis resulting from the health crisis due to strengthening regional value added and innovation triggered by that and thus the reaching of these goals the energy crisis that is energy transition with 100 percent from renewables that is resilience in every way and that makes us also more in 
dependable of what we live today. And so we will also master crisis number three, the climate crisis, by dropping emissions and by thus reaching these goals. Change is an enormous opportunity. And at the end, let me mention four Ds, at least in German. Decarbonization due to the extension of renewables, 100% supply from renewables, sectoral coupling towards a heat transition and transport transition. That means innovation and possibilities, which are so important. Digitalization is the key factor. Smart grids and smart mobility are of utmost importance. Decentralized solutions and energy transition on the spot. Municipal communal stakeholders have to be strengthened and thus also a broad-based acceptance and that is the number four, democratization of the entire process of strengthening the take-up and acceptance, integration, participation of citizens. Those are the four Ds. We have to tackle the four potentials we have to lift. And so I'm positive that we will make it and innovation which will be required will be implemented and in total opportunities triggered by that will certainly be used together by all of us. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish to all of you a fruitful conference and excellent discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and in particular for your thoughts and ideas, Professor Kempford. What can be done in order to attract and also keep the good, the fascinating companies in Vienna? You should ask the colleagues of the economic agency of Vienna. But one thing definitely helps. They should be called on stage over and over again. And this is what we are doing now. And the motto is Vienna Calling. As the Vienna Economic Agency Vienna, we promote companies, the economy and the location. In our department technology services, we call upon the stage innovative Vienna-based technology companies and support them in presenting their achievements to technical audiences. For the MIA, we are very happy to have three highly interesting companies from Vienna. Just have a look. Hello. Hi, I'm Jürgen Meyerhofer, CEO and co-founder of Inspired. Renewables like wind and solar are of crucial importance for a successful energy transition, but the generation is highly fluctuating, hard to predict. Near blackouts and extremely high prices are clear signals showing us that our power grids have hit the limits. What we do need is flexibility. Flexibility in order to compensate the fluctuation in the generation of wind and sun, solar energy. But where can flexibility come from? First, we can build in battery storage, gigawatt hours, but there is a faster and much more obvious alternative. The active making available of flexibility by plants which are in use already, like thermal power plants, pump storage, large batteries, or even e-mobility. And this is the very thing we do. Inspired, we are a digital service provider and we reduce entry barriers to a minimum as to the short term market in order to gain more proceeds for flexible plants. We do full automation and use of artificial intelligence. Our trading algorithms take decisions within milliseconds. With our services, we have an irresistible financial incentive for the operators of power plants so that they make available their flexibilities in the power grid. The energy transition is of a global nature. This is why from 2023, we will also offer our services globally. The world is in radical change. The way of how we live together is called into question and rethought. I'm Stefan Komarnik, I'm the CEO of Hakom Time Series. Join me for a travel into the future. 
Welcome in the year 2035. Here there are three Ds, decarbonization, democratization, and digitalization. Decarbonization, the era of fossil fuels is over. We have understood that our planet can't be overburdened with CO2. Democratization, energy generation is now possible for everyone. Prosumers not only consume, but they also feed in energy. Sharing, not owning, is the buzzword. Fewer resources together means less CO2 emissions and digitalization. We live in a completely network money, IoT and big data. These are the topics of today in our CO2 neutral society. All that interacts in real time and without any friction. Back to the present. In order to prevent brownouts and blackouts, generation distribution of electric energy has to be done in real time. This means that big data from an enormous number of sensors and from distributed areas have to be processed and extremely fast. To marry all this data for a health index, this will be the Zeitrein technology of Hakam. Power Quality Lab is part of a larger whole in order to make our blue planet green. Everyone of us can produce energy, supply themselves and deliver to others or feed energy into the grid. Due to us, such energy communities are used for planning and operation of generation plants. We lend entire support to them. Our platform for the energy communities as market participants organize all the required programs processes electronically and fully automated together with the grid operator. All energy flows are measured and are compared to weather-based data. The weather data are also made available to the participants so that they can operate and control their smart homes. An important area in energy communities for process optimization and optimization is to integrate all potential participants. As soon as we have found them and integrated them into our system, we support them in all contracts which are legally required among the stakeholders. When energy is delivered, our software does the billing and also monitors the payment transactions. And here it comes, the grand moment when the Mission Innovation Oster Awards will be conferred. But before we do that, on behalf of everyone in front of the camera, our thanks go to those behind the camera, because they have invested a lot of work so that these awards can exist at all. The organizers, the jury members, in very, very long meetings, they have decided on what is specific to each project, who should receive which award. That was a lot of work for many, many hours. Cordial thanks to all of them, all those helping hands in the background. And since there is a lot of activity there already, let's hand over to the grand virtual stage. There, Federal Minister Leonore Gebesler will present and confer the awards, together with laudation speakers like Klaus Psyner, Managing Director, Austrian FFG. Theresia Vogel, Managing Director, Climate and Energy Fund, Gerhard Christina, CTO, Austrian Power Grid, Barbara Schmidt, Secretary General of Österreichs Energie and Edeltraut Stiftinger, Managing Director of Austrian Economic Promotion Institute. So I hand over to the festive virtual stage. A lot of fun and congratulations to all the winners. With the Mission Innovation Austria Award, Outstanding Performance in the Field of Energy Innovation uh, awarded a prize. And there are four categories to this award. Category Tech Solution and Local Heroes. Uh, 
With our support scheme, we support technology and solutions for the energy transition. It is a particular pleasure for me to have the MIA award in order to confer this for projects which will help us use energy systems of the future and improve them. Our partners FFG and Climate Fund, thanks to them for their activities in subsidizing this research. How important research and innovation are is shown by today's pandemic. And research and innovation, of course, is also a crucial reply and response to the climate change. So research, Austrian research, is of key importance. Hydrogen, of course, is the name of the game nowadays, and rightly so, but how can hydrogen be established in European energy systems. In the category Tech Solutions Local Hero, innovation is a must. And the winner does a clear justice to this. It is a project which uses green hydrogen in a tangible manner. A lighthouse company in Austria, which has always done research out of tradition. And they have now a mature idea. And this very Austrian innovation will become a game changer, not only for companies, also for cities, agriculture and energy communities. We will have green hydrogen by means of electrolysis and locally produce it. And Therese Vogel knows who they are. Well, let's hide it for a while. Today's winner in this category, Tech Solutions at Local Hero, is a ready-to-use complete solution which allows sectoral coupling and seasonal storage of excessive power by means of hydrogen. This highly ambitious and modular system, and this is another advantage, offers maximum flexibility independent of others and generates, of course, local value added. In an era like ours, this is very important. So we hope it will not only revolutionize Austria, but also export markets. And the generation of green hydrogen from water and solar power is not a secret any longer, but by doing that, we can also store power and use it in a manifold manner. The solar power yield of summertime can now also be used during winter, meaning no ray of sun will ever get lost. And today's winner in the category Tech Solutions and Local Hero is Fronius Soul Hub. Thank you and congratulations. Here we are in front of our most recent product, the Fronius Soul Hub, a decentralized hub for solar energy. Here in the Soul Hub, solar energy by means of electrolysis is converted into hydrogen. Hydrogen can then be used for vehicles or also can be electrified back and fed back into the grid. This means energy community plants of young companies, logistics, and also farmers. They can use their own solar energy to produce hydrogen. And by means of that hydrogen, there can be emissions-free logistics. Category Resilient Energy Systems. Lately, we have seen that the topic of grid stability is of utmost importance, not only as to more and more renewables in the grid, but also due to more and more energy and power trading. That's why we need more resilient energy systems. That's why I'm very happy about our cooperation with APG in this category. The European energy system is in a profound change towards renewable power supply. In Austria as well, with the EAG, the new legislation, the idea is by 2030 to cover 100% of demand from renewables. The pathway towards there, however, is quite winding and challenging. Alongside with extension of infrastructure, it is definitely necessary also to use innovation 
and innovative ideas to accompany this pathway. An enormous challenge to the security of supply definitely is volatile renewables which have to cover our consumption behavior. The existing project has this very purpose. The question is, how can volatile generation, particularly from PV systems, be forecast as well as possible so that the balancing energy and also security of supply in Austria are still granted? Across Austria presently there are more than 100,000 PV systems and the trend is growing. In this very project, the possibility is to use meteorological data which are combined with generation data from the PV systems and thus for all over Austria, if forecast as precise as possible for the next few hours is possible. Thus, this project is of key importance for the further extension of photovoltaics because it helps to best use grids. It also helps to drop balancing energy and it is very important for security of supply. The winner project in the category Resilient Energy Systems is Eri Genia, Austria Institute of Technologies. Presently, in Austria, more than 100,000 PV systems are functional, covering 1.5% of energy. For the Mission 2030 targets, we have to expand this by 10 times. Due to fluctuating generation, there is an enormous challenge and re reliable forecast is more and more important. Together with Fronius, the AIT has developed this new approach for a better forecast. For that, we have automated data exchange between neighboring plants of an entire region. For instance, if there is a cloud and thus reduced generation of one system as a function of wind direction and wind speed, a different drop can be expanded also elsewhere. By means of machine learning methods, neural networks have been used in order to learn such connections in order to forecast the movements of clouds. During our project, a well-functioning proof of concept has been given. The first results show for forecast in the field of hour ahead and intra-hour a very promising performance and suggest a very high potential for a real implementation and use. The project Avigenia is part of the Solar Magnet project together with Cyprus, UK. Thank you very much. Category Entrepreneur. Young people with entrepreneurial spirit, having a drive towards the market for fast implementation and with a lot of courage to test solutions, that's a specific category. And there are more and more of these in our country and we will also need more of them. Together with AWS and Österreichs Energie, we confer an award to such commitment. In the category Entrepreneur, sustainable reconstruction and adaptation of the energy system is in the heart. For that, we not only need an extension of renewable energies, but, and that's key, also most efficient use of the valuable energy carrier. Both in the energy transition and in energy efficiency, digitalization helps us very much. Big data helps us our customers and the market participants are thus much better known and we can do justice to their wishes. What would happen if different market participants in that very area communicated and cooperated with each other? What if they exchanged data between them? These questions have been addressed by our winners team and Edeltraut Stiftinger will tell us who they are. Thanks indeed, Barbara. What can we say about the topic having won the MIA 2021 award. It is a spin-off of Vienna University of Technology. There is a lady in the founding team. Why do I say so? Because still that doesn't happen so often. In a technology-minded startup, not very often do we see a woman in the top team. And the jury has been convinced by the fact that 
there is very clear and broad-based competence. This is critical for success. The AWS, the Austin Economic Service, have accompanied many startups day after day. We keep seeing that. We require competence from technology down to distribution in order to have success at the market. And this team has shown that in a very persuasive manner to the jury. What is also important, knowledge transfer is, of course, a buzzword today. And for this team, this is not only an empty word, but they are living such knowledge transfer. They have indeed succeeded in uniting university-based research and a marketable product. And last but not least, they have shown to the jury real entrepreneurial spirit and thus an innovative solution and approach which they can prove in such a way that it is easy to understand and to the point. And what then is the target of this startup, they want to step up energy efficiency in production. And here, let me quote the team themselves and describe their product. We have an analytic tool which, in a reliable manner, makes available sensor data in real time and calculation is intuitive and easy. Thus, energy consultants, energy managers and others can use that without any coding knowledge and that in an easy to use way during their production. And now I'm telling you who the winner is, who has won the MIA in the category entrepreneur in 2021. And it is the startup Campfire Solutions with their platform Mr.io. Congratulations. Hi from Vienna, I'm Benjamin. Hi, I'm Anna. Hi, I'm Markus. 6% of the global energy emissions can be saved by operating existing industrial machinery more efficiently. The best part is, these machines already emit data. But the bad part is, nobody can use it at the moment. This is where we come in. Our software Gnist.io makes analyzing IoT data as easy as calculating with pen on paper. Our drag and drop interface makes experimenting and evaluating potential energy efficiency measures playful and exciting. And the best part is you can collaborate on a solution with your colleagues. And if it works, you can easily share it. Our research results make us 80% faster than any competing solution. So if you want to join us on this journey and by chance are an investor or partner, maybe get in touch. A particular focus of mine is rising generations. There are more and more young people showing a lot of commitment to the energy transition. And this I'd like to honor by the MIA Award for the best scientific paper in the field of future energy systems. And that's where I come in again. Since this is an audience award, the results have come in only later. And so it's my honor to now tell you who the winner is for the MIA Next Generation Award. And the winner is a lady, a young lady who speaks about profitability assessment of energy communities her doctoral paper. The optimum dimensioning of PV systems on roofs and facades and contracting as a financing options are in the fore of her work. A short presentation will be delivered by a video and it was so convincing for the jury. Congrats from my end and in particular from Minister Gewessler and all audition speakers and that too, Bernadette Fina. Energy communities, are they profitable and what is the optimum PV dimensioning? Is contracting a valid funding option? Because thousands of euros on bank accounts only wait for being invested. What is the settlement pattern inference on the profitability of an energy community? And which potentials would those ECs have if they were rolled out across Austria? 
Presently, in the field of energy communities, there are more questions than answers. And with my doctoral thesis, I'd like to shed some light on this. Energy communities are, of course, profitable, in particular, if the optimum plant capacities can be planned and scheduled. This is possible by my optimization model. Contracting in many cases is highly profitable, even in combination with an extensive thermal renovation of buildings. Profitability of ECs is, of course, quite highest in multi-apartment building areas, and the value added of the implementation rather is in the rural area. If they are rolled out across Austria, energy communities would entail a cost optimum PV potential of some 10 gigawatt, which is in tune with the Austrian extension target by 2030. More information on my work can be read from my international publications. Two further winners are of equal value. Coda Rotas with her master thesis on model-based sustainable product development and Anne Trautmann in her master thesis making prerequisites to make electrical grids fit for the energy transition. The special award of the jury, which would have fit many categories, goes to Valeria Azarova. In her dissertation, she leaks into households and in how far they can step up their energy efficiency. All award winners not only receive the award, but also some prize money. Once again, congratulations. A project like the Mission Innovation Austria could not exist if we hadn't so many partners. You can find them on our website, for instance, and sometimes also here in our program, like now, the partner INEO. Do accompany me on a 90-second trip to Hamburg. Hamburg comes up with a climate protection plan with many elements. We want to co-shape it. And here in your Jenbacher came in at the very right time. What is specific to this product is that it's for the very first time that an existing engine on the basis of natural gas has been converted to hydrogen or mix of hydrogen and natural gas. This is a milestone in the energy transition for this part of technology. And the first fire was, of course, the moment when we could say it does work. So we have proven by that that hydrogen can be used in any ratio, can be added. Up to 100% of hydrogen can be used in an engine, so you have no more CO2 emissions because it's burned off without any CO2. This to me is the energy transition with the smallest possible footprint. I do expect that this will radiate out to the world in order to show what can be done by means of a gas-fired hydrogen engine. So, and now it's about time to say goodbye to this stream here. And we are asking you to click on the next live stream according to program after the end of this one, because then you will go on to Tirol for their opening of the Mission Innovation Austria Week. The colleagues there have prepared a small studio in conformity with COVID rules. And there, for you, there will be enough space to keep a distance, but there will be a lot of virtual proximity to you. Why is it Tirol? Very simple. Actually, the Mission Innovation Austria Week normally is on tour through Austria, presently only virtually, and the land of Tirol this time is the partner of the MIA 2021. We are looking forward to who it will be next time, maybe your land. Just do speak to Michael Hübner of the Ministry. He will tell you what is necessary for that. Maybe next time it will be your place.
But what I can promise is, definitely, if you want, we will meet again tomorrow, because there, in the morning, we will do a virtual railway trip together with Theresia Vogel of the Climate and Energy Fund. All over Austria, you will see some showcase projects, small cities as the engines of the energy transition. If you feel like it, on our virtual train, there are enough seats available. We'll be there and looking forward to you, particularly if you are decision makers yourselves in a community or just committed citizens, because these are the ones who will bring in so many ideas tomorrow. So just in a few minutes, the next next stream from Tyrol will start to click on it so that you can see it. I wish to you and the local colleagues an excellent and fascinating program.